Dinner and a Movie is brought to you by Hamilton Walkers. A remake of a classic horror film and a political thriller on Netflix are available for your viewing pleasure this weekend. Here to review The Invisible Man and The Last Thing He Wanted are film critics Chuck Kaplinski and Pam Powell. Although after reading your reviews, I don't think anyone's going to get much pleasure out of either of these movies, according to you at least. According to, yeah, me, according yes. to yeah. Yeah. Chuck Kaplinski. The person who knows what he's talking <laughs> oh. about. Yeah, I was really kind of hoping this would be like invisible, but there you well, are. I'm not even seeing you. Oh, I've, no. I've, I've, I've worked to, you know, to block you out visually. And so, you know, this movie was but nothing not to me. auditorily. Yes, I unfortunately. Yeah, it's like a, <laughs> who, who knew that I would wish to be deaf to <laughs> the Invisible Man. Yes, let's start this. Universal Pictures trying once again to rejuvenate their classic monster characters, this time with The Invisible Man, directed by Lee Wanell of the Saw films. He writes and directs this boring, boring film that stars oh Elizabeth God. Moss as Cecilia. Here you see her trying to escape from her billionaire psycho boyfriend, Adrian Griffin. Well, she does get away, but she doesn't get far before she finds out that apparently the boyfriend has committed suicide and has left her $5 million. Well, that seems like a pretty good piece of news. Unfortunately, though, she starts to think that, in fact, he is not dead. She starts to see things that other people don't see. She starts to hear things that other people don't hear. She starts to feel things that other people don't feel. And she's convinced that somehow or another, this master of optics has turned out a way to be invisible. And she is right. And he terrorizes her and gets her alienated from all of her friends and has, has her committed because everyone thinks, of course, that she's crazy. Uh, there's some really nice moments in this movie. When the Invisible Man is doing his thing and we don't see him, but we see the effects of his actions, like people getting beaten up or things being thrown, that is really pretty cool. They do a really good job with those sequences. Problem is, for me, the movie is much too slow. This movie yeah. runs about two hours and four minutes, and there's far too many gaps between the exciting stuff and, you know, what we really pay for to see in a monster movie like this. This movie just plods along from one sequence to the next, and I found myself uh -oh. checking my clock far too often during this <laughs> boring film. And I Did want to clock you as you say all of oh, this because no. you're wrong. No, I'm not. This is not fun. Even close. This is a fun nope. horror flick that keeps you on the edge of your seat. No. It sets the right tone. It sets everything up so that when it gives you those surprises, you are truly surprised. I gasped, I screamed, I jumped, I entertained the two guys that were on either side of me. You don't watch horror films, so this is all new to you. That's oh. why. Oh, oh, dear. Thank you. Thank you for mansplaining that to me. That's okay. That's this why I'm is here. also about a woman who is battered and Elizabeth Moss actually plays a really good character with this as she devolves, I like her. I like her. As she devolves into this character and her self-confidence is low. I think it takes a lot of talent to portray two levels of a story. This is a fun horror oh. flick yet it still embodies that characteristic of someone who is a victim of spousal abuse. Oh, I will say the previews terrify me. They, like when they fun. throw the paint on him. Yeah, that's that, yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 And, and they do have a lot of things where they just kind of, why did you do that? Why did you do that? So I will give exactly. you that exactly. kind of stuff. However, Far it's, still, too it's long. a lot of fun. Okay, <laughs> Pam, Pam gives it a, a thumbs up. Okay, really quickly, we're about out of time, but I want to, the last thing he wanted, this one's on Netflix. Hot mess. Agreed. One of the worst films I've ever seen. <gasps> So is it even worth talking about? I didn't finish it. Oh, oh my gosh, really? I bailed on it. Oh, you I take am. away my movie review card, I bailed on it. Really? I couldn't figure out what the heck was going it, it on. It is. It is a hot mess. You don't know what's going on. They leave out so much. Do you read It's like they might cram five movies into one movie, but they don't explain anything no. correctly. No, there's so many loose ends with this. Never, nothing ever gets tied oh. together. I will agree with you in that. It's so we can walk out of here with smiles on our faces and get along. Uh -huh. Well, better. there you but, go. And but, there's other people that are going to have smiles on I their faces, know. too. I know. We've got five winners for Knives Out. Therese Hernandez Campbell, Roger Fuentes, Jennifer McHanna. I know it's up on the screen. I like reading it on my card. Yeah, Danny S. Lawhorn and Linda Leitz. You are winner of one DVD combo package. Thank you for participating in our contest. Next week we will have Dark Waters. So Ooh, stay tuned. Look at you guys rolling out with all these great prizes. But you can only get in on them if you follow their website and Facebook and maybe sign up for that newsletter. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you all next week and we'll tomorrow on the morning show. Sounds mm -hmm. good. All right. CILiving.tv is where you can learn all that information. But we need to get to today.